What's up everybody and welcome back. First of all, thank you so much for all of the support that you've shown so far. I didn't really expect this channel to start growing like this uh, just from the first few videos. So that's just really awesome to see. I hope you're all getting something good out of it. Um, I'm eventually looking at uh, trying to build a website and everything at the minute just to house a lot of my prints on and eventually I will be looking at actually doing a bit more of an in-depth and structured Lightroom course rather than just putting up some of the uh, the one-off bits of material I've got at the minute. So if that's something you are interested in, please do drop a comment. It'd be just good to see if uh, it's something that people want. That way I don't end up spending lots of time on it. Um, but it's something I'll be looking to do in the future. And on that, I figured today we could go over one of the tools and this would basically be kind of like a test lesson, sort of uh, something that I would include in such a course, take you through in detail one of the tools in Lightroom that maybe some people don't use much because it's sort of tucked away at the bottom or not too sure actually what it is doing. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the camera calibration. Now, if you're like me, when you first start with Lightroom, the camera calibration is just this uh, mysterious thing at the very, very end of the workflow that Lightroom has. Uh, you can find it usually if you scroll right the way down to the bottom. But the first thing I want you to do is to go, let's say down to the tone curve here, and I want you to right click and I want you to go on Customize Develop Panel. Now, what this is gonna do is bring up all of the different areas and this immediately allows you to start switching around some of these panels um, to match your workflow so you don't end up scrolling up and down a lot. And the first thing I want you to do then is take that calibration tool that is all the way down here and I want you to just pop it above the HSL sliders. This is because what we're gonna be affecting here with the calibration, we're also gonna be using the HSL sliders as well in conjunction with it. So both of these things affect color. Why not put them together in your workflow rather than having them completely separate for one another? Click save and then you will have that now appearing with the rest of your sliders. So look at that, all our colors in one place. So what is camera calibration doing then and how is it different to the other color sliders that we've got here? The HSL sliders, uh, we've got all of the different uh, sort of hues going on. But when we look at the camera calibration, we actually only have three channels. We've got our red, green, and our blues. Now this is all to do with the pixels. And if you go into like the color science side of it, it's really to do with what exactly what it says. It's your camera's calibration. So every brand of camera might have a different idea of what makes a red, a blue, and a green. Uh, same with our eyes. We might see these types of colors slightly differently. So it's almost like taking a step back and going, well, if we look at our color wheel here, who decided this is red? Who decided this is green? And as you go between Sony, between Canon, you know, each of these are slightly different. And that's why some people, when they take photos with different cameras, some people prefer Canon because of X, Y, Z. Some people prefer Sony because of X, Y, Z. It's to do with how those cameras have been programmed to take these photos and how it captures these colors. Now the camera calibration allows us to edit these channels within the pixel. So when we deal with the camera calibration, we've got a pixel that is made up of three channels. That is the red, the green, and the blue. The calibration then is affecting those channels across all pixels. Whereas our HSL sliders are more targeting that color specifically there within Lightroom. So you can kind of think of it as the camera calibration is more a global thing, whereas your HSL sliders is more to do with like the local adjustments really targeting in on those colors. So we're gonna have a quick example with the color wheel here, and then we're gonna have a look at a photo that actually uses these three channels really brightly. Um, and see how we can play around with that. And then finally, we're gonna try a couple of real world like examples with photos. I'm just gonna show you how I would use the calibration um, to help get different sort of styles out of photos. So here in our color wheel then, we have our three channels and we have our wheel. And you can see we've got the different sort of tones going all the way around here then, the shades of blues, greens, and reds, and how they all intersect with each other. If we go over to the calibration, and let's say we pick our red channel, I want you to have a look at what actually happens to the entire color wheel as I pull this from one side to the other. So you'll notice there, that is not just the reds that are being affected. So as I pull this up, it's not just this side of the color wheel where the reds are, but 
all of the color wheel, the blues, the greens, everything has been affected here. And that's because this red channel is present still within those pixels. So in altering that, it is going to alter globally all of the colors. If I pull this back then, let's pick a different channel. Let's go down to our greens. So this isn't just going to affect the solid green color. It's also going to change how the reds and blues appear to us. So you can see as I pull over to this side, our reds get that slight tint of orange up to the top there. As I come to the other side, they, it sort of moves more towards the pinks. You know, it's not that solid red that we had. If I move the blues, same thing, everything's changing globally. Now, interestingly, if I go down to my sliders and I just move only the blue slider, have a look at what it does to the color wheel, but also the channel here. So notice that the red and the green channels are staying the same. And also on the color wheel, the only bits that have been affected here are the ones where the blues primarily sit within the color wheel. As soon as you hit that red and green channel, they are stopping. Whereas the moment I come up here and I move my blue slider, everything is changing on the color wheel and on those blue channels. So you can use these together to like, actually create really awesome styles and move very far away from the colors that are in your image. And that's how I'm gonna show you what we would do with one of my photos later on. But let's just have a look at how this is going to affect a photo that uses the red, green, and blue channels. So here we have two parrots then, and this is the only kind of photo I could find. It's one that I took recently. Um, and it's got, as we can see, red, greens, and blues going on here. So we have our two parrots, let's call them Hank and Denise, why not? Now, as I change the calibration on Hank and Denise here, if I pull my greens across and I go more towards that yellow, you can see it's also affecting the reds. So those reds are actually getting a little bit duller and that's that's not something I might not want. And if I pull to the other side, uh, you know, the greens are going quite, well, it's just got that sort of teal, it's a bit more bluish kind of into the greens there. So again, you know, neither of this maybe looks too natural like that. I don't like the greens don't look natural over here. Uh, if I try moving the blues across, so I can make those blues go a really sort of nice shade of color there. Um, but you can see as well, this is affecting the rest of the picture. So now the greens have gone slightly. So as you're working with the calibration here, you got to be aware that you are changing colors all over the place, but this is where you can almost like save them with the HSL sliders. So let's have a play around with those and let's introduce some of the HSL sliders to see if we can locally recover the colors that have been affected. So if I go up to my calibration and I'm going to pull these greens down because I want to have a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. And I quite like, the greens of the feathers that are coming out now uh, on Hank and Denise here, but I'm not keen on what's happened with that red. Now, if I go up here and I start trying to move the red slider to recover that, you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to start affecting other pixels in there. So instead, I'm going to pull that green to where I like it. Saturation, it's purely up to you. You know, if I pull down here, I'm going to dampen those greens like a little bit. You know, I could increase the saturation. That's completely personal taste there. Uh, I might just boost this slightly. But now I wanna fix my reds without necessarily affecting the green color that I've got going on here now. So I'm gonna go down to my hue slider for the red and I'm simply just gonna pull this across a little bit until I get that nice sort of bright red in. So instead of that orangey feel that was there, you know, I'm not after full on pink, but I'm just pulling it to bring that back almost to similar what we had it going on before, but now we have a change in the greens. Now, you can use these for very, very subtle changes, um, like overall in the image. Like I say, you can use them for big styles as well. In this case, um, I'm trying to alter the greens um, and get a little bit more of a unified like green pixel across the entire screen here, but the hue slider has allowed me just to recover that ever so slightly. Um, if I was to use up here, that's gonna obviously affect the entire thing. Uh, that's one method that I would use the calibration for then. So I can go down here, I could try the blues as well. So if I move the blues more towards that nice sort of light color, I don't want the purple, I want just that little bit more like aqua into them. There we go, I'm just gonna pull that up there. 
Now I'm going to go back down to my red channel and I'm just going to tweak that so it's a red that I like and not really an orange one and move that down like that. So you can save your colors back and forward. Again, a lot of this when you're dealing with color, it very much is personal taste. Uh, you don't have to use this at all, but this is just a great example to show you what the calibration is actually doing. It's affecting all of these pixels on a, a global, across the entire photo, whereas with our sliders down here, we are targeted in those specific colors. So as I go to the extremes on the red there, the calibration changes that I've made to my green and blue channels are not being affected. So talking about different styles then, how we can uh, potentially use the camera calibration in this way. So one of the most popular ones might be the uh, orange and teal look. So the calibration can really like easily unify a lot of colors that are going on um, by sort of squashing these tones into one area. So if I pulled this down over to this side, you know, I'm moving a lot of my blues to not necessarily look like very separate shades that we go going on here, but instead I'm pulling these across and we've got this sort of aqua to teal feeling going across there. I can match it with the red uh, channel as well. If I pull that to one side, uh, you can see we've got pretty much our orange and teal style. So if we had an image that was using a lot of different um, types of reds and blues in there and we wanted to unify that down into one style, that's where your calibration is going to come in handy. So if I had a photo that was just full of lots of different kind of blues and purples going on here and I pull this over to one side, then I'm sort of unifying all of them into one blue channel. If I match it with the other opposite end of the color wheel with my oranges, I get a really nice style and that's why this orange and blue style is very popular. But if we try this then on another image. So for me, the camera calibration, um, I tend to use the most with sort of forest images and trees. Usually within them, you have like a lot of different greens going on and you might wanna go one of two ways with this. You might wanna uh, pull all these colors in. So you might wanna unify these colors again. So make some of the yellow leaves look a bit more green and just have a, a really strong green feeling to it. Or you might want to change seasons completely and make all of these leaves into more like an autumn orange. Uh, and this can be done really easily with the calibration here then. So if I was to grab the blue channel and pull this down, have a look at what's happening to that top right of the leaves. Uh, it's automatically shifting the color of these then. So let's zoom it closer and go again. And it's pushing them more towards that autumn feeling. I, I can do the same up here then if I pull my red channel across. That gives me a, a bit more of a yellow, probably not something you might want. Uh, for me, I want this to be a bit warmer, but maybe you're happy with how that's looking. Uh, we've still got like some greens going on here, uh, but let's just take that as a starting point then. So we've shifted these to completely to the other side, to the extremes, uh, and that's pulled away the colors of this. So now I'm gonna go down into my sliders here and have a play, see if I can make these new colors that I've introduced into the image um, just match what I want a bit more. So if I pull my yellows more towards my oranges, if I go all the way, then again, I'm starting to get that nice orangey like feeling from it, that bit more of that autumn vibe. Uh, I can do the same up here. I can pull my oranges into the reds ever so slightly more. And then I can always look to tweak this with the saturations and find the balance that you know I'm really after here. Maybe that's a little bit too orange now, so I'm just gonna back off on the hues a little bit. With the greens, you know, I can shift this, the last of the green in the image across to that side as well. Um, and I can choose to kind of suck out a bit more of that. So it's a very quick one, but this is something that I, I do quite a lot with my landscape images. Um, for me, when I put this, and style of calibration onto it. I get this really big like fantasy edit from there. Um, and you'll see that a lot in my images, but as I zoom in, you can see these greens are now completely changed into this sort of shade, shades of autumn there. Uh, it's not always a hundred percent, but I, I like what's going on. And you can see up here, this has had like quite a big effect on the blues as well. So you might want to go back and tweak what's happening with the blues. Uh, for me here, I might just suck out the blues completely. Uh, rather than having a blue sky, I might just go for a bit more of a colder feeling because it was too distracting, that colour up there. So you got to be wary that, because it is a global fix, you are going to change certain things that you don't necessarily like about the image, but that's where you can use what's going on down here to recover it. 
let's reset that then and, and let's try and go the other way. So let's say we want to unify our colors a little bit more. So whether it's like the blue, um, so the orange and teal style. So if I wanted to unify this, I might grab my green primary and pull it more over to this side. And you can see that's removing some of those yellow tinges and just unifying the colors a little bit more. If I pull my blues as well, that's adding to it. So now everything just looks green, basically. Um, I can come back down to here, you know, and push that even further. But that's already going to done a good job. Now, you might want to do that. Uh, to me, that just looks a little bit dull on the color side. Like I like to have a little bit more um, going on. But there's times where you might need that. You might need to just uh, suck out some things and just unify the colors. And that's the main thing I use the calibration for here, which is unifying colors together or trying to completely change the style of a piece. Now, the interesting thing is if you can settle on some calibration uh, settings that work really nicely. So for me, I like these oranges. I apply that a lot to my images. Uh, that starts to become your style. So you apply that to every image. You're no longer just dealing with the, the calibration that you've taken from your camera of saying, this is what your camera believes these three channels should look like, red, green, and blue. Instead, you're now saying to your audience, this is what I think these channels should look like for the red, green, and blue, and this is my style. So if you're in that kind of early area of like editing and you're still trying to discover your own style, I'd highly recommend playing around with the calibration. See if you can find um, a good kind of like color theme that works over the sort of photos that you take, whether that's landscape, streets. Um, save it as a preset and then start applying it to different images. Uh, and tweak it from there. And that is a great way just to start finding your style. Remember, you can go to the extremes on these. I find if you go to the extremes and pull backwards, it's a little bit easier on the eyes than just building it up. That can very much trick your eyes. And if you ever wanna save your colors, you always have the HSL sliders down here, but make sure you whack the two of these together because you can see I'm very quickly going between the two. You don't wanna to have to be scrolling all the way down to the bottom of your workflow. So I hope that helped you understand what camera calibration can do and some of the powers. There's obviously many more things you can do with this. Um, fixing skin tones is a big one as well. And I might look to do something on that in the future. But this has also been a bit of a test lesson for me looking at putting this course together. If that's something you would be interested in, please let me know in the comments below. When I say I would be putting a course out there, this is not one that's gonna break the bank. This is one that's gonna be very cost effective because I just want everybody to, <laughs> to find this material and you know not make the same mistakes I did or spend hours and hours just playing around with sliders you're not too sure on what you're doing with but if it's something that interests you please let me know below and also subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one